Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. God bless you. We want to declare God's blessings and victories, um, our, you know, our prayers and yes. encouragement. And just for today, you know, it's going to be an amazing time of worship and the word. And the Lord has given you, in fact, a message fresh yes. from the kingdom today. Yes. 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 So the, thank, thank God that you got the, gave me this opportunity. I was reading the, the Psalm chapter 1, and the Lord spoke to me about it. And I wanted to really share with you the, the message that the guy God gave me. And Melody, she will speak about the message, what will be. So, you know, the title God gave you is the Bible. Love it and meditate or read it only. So, is it one or is it the other? You know, should we only, you know, love and meditate on the Bible or just read it? Now, the answer obviously is for, for the growth and the maturity and the Holy Spirit-led life, we need to do both. Yeah. We need to do both, which is, you know, being, uh, you know, in love with the Word of God, meditating on the Word of God, and reading it, yes. but not trying to read the Bible without the Holy Spirit, you know, that helps us love and meditate on it. Yes, and the question is, should we only love and meditate on the Bible or just read it? This is the question. So do we, we want to read in Psalm chapter 1, verse uh, 2 and 3. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, just like what we're seeing here, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. That means just protection and God's victory, God's breakthrough provision. So here in this... Uh psalm is showing very clearly that God it's only it's not only reading the the, the what which give us to be uh, uh, fruitful and to to bring fruit uh, and in his season and he says whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper but he really concentrates in this psalm the first psalm chapter one on meditating mm. and delight in his law. He says delight. Mm. His delight is in the law of the Lord. So means that loving the word and meditating, spirit concentrating more than only reading. Right. It's like it's like what Christ said about abiding. It's like, you know, when, when I think I think of when cattle they chew on the herbs on the grass. They, they digest it halfway, but then they have to come back and chew on it some more, right? Yes. For all the nutrients, the grass, you know? Yes. So why is only reading the Bible not enough? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the first point, reading the Bible is important, but meditating on it, it will give the Holy Spirit the permission to send the written word directly to your heart Woo! and mind. Hallelujah. Otherwise, the Bible only become a history book for you, to you. So we read in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts and I will be their God and they will be my people. He himself so writes when, his word in our hearts. So when uh, it's very important to read the Bible but when you meditate mm. and you love the word, you give the permission to Holy Spirit that words of the Bible becomes living. And that word goes to you. Yeah, that word. The words. Yeah, the words yeah. of the Bible goes to you directly to your heart and mind. Otherwise, the Bible becomes a history book. We, we pray. Uh, so in the, in the, and it's the, the, the evidence about this is that it says, this is my, the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. So when when you really uh, take the Bible, when you love the word and you meditate, it directly goes to your mind and your heart. It stays there. Thank For you, that God. reason, he's speaking about the psalm that he is meditating Thank day you, and night. So it means that that word is written now in your mind and in your heart. 
it's more than only on the papers. It, it comes it's, and so you this, know, this, the Holy Spirit does that. Yeah, so <laughs> when, the, when you meditate and you love the word, the, the automatically the, you give permission to the Holy Spirit to bring that word and write, them, and write them on your heart and your mind. Thank you, God. So, so it becomes, you be, for that reason, the disciples, when Peter wanted to speak with the uh, chief of the uh, synagogue and all three people, he, he was a fisherman, you know, he was Ill illiterate. Very simple. Yeah, illiterate. He didn't even know how to read and write. From where all these words came? Because it was written in his heart and his mind. By, through the Holy Spirit, because when he was reading or listening to the word of the Bible, it was coming directly inside because he was meditating and he was you, loving the word. Thank so you, number two, you can... It is not enough to only read the Bible. We have to love and meditate on the word. Okay, so it's not just out of duty, but we have to, you know, I think that's actually going to be the effect of, you know, knowing that God wants us to love him and his word, but as we seek him, we're going to love seeking him. We're going to love searching his word. We're going to love being with him and learning of him and being made more like him. So that is the combination. So Psalm 119.48 explains the point of loving and meditating on the word. I lift my hands in prayer because of your commandments, which I love i will meditate on your laws hallelujah thank you father so another psalm in verse one uh, chapter one verse two but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law he meditates day and night and that's what we quote, we quoted earlier so it's it's continual you have to love the word so it's reading it as a history book it won't change you anything you have to love the word. You have to delight the word. Means delight means that uh, to rejoice in that word. To really read it with as if hungry. You are hungry. You want to be uh, eat. Bread. It's, it's a yeah. food. It's said not only by bread a man lives, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. So, yeah, Jesus said to when it was on temptation uh, when on the on the mountain with Satan. So uh, he said, uh, so, the, right, no so the, the word of God is our, it feeds our spirit, Thank you, but we have to love it. It's mm -hmm. like a, when you have a meal, you love it, you will eat it until the end of the, you won't leave anything in, the, in your plate. You will finish it because you really love that meal. Or if that, you love it. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're able to, if you don't want to force things, but yeah. Means that, means that you will, if you love it, you will try to finish it. Yes. To hundred percent, if you love a meal. Right. So it's the same thing. When you love word. the word, the word of God. When you love it, like it says. So it's not enough only to read the Bible. We have to love it and meditate. So the and Psalm the David understood that he Thank has God. to love. I lift my hands in prayer because of your commandments. Says that I which oh, yeah, I yeah. love it. Which I love. love it. Yes, I will meditate on your laws. And he says also on the Psalm. To meditate, uh, it says uh, he delights in the word of the in the law of the Lord, and his law he meditates day and night. So uh, God gave us these commandments. He gave us His law. He gave us the scriptures. Thank you, Father. But we have to love. Thank you, God. Love, love and meditate, so we can uh, really that word become alive. Amen. That it will it won't be only a written word. It will be the words that we really live Hallelujah. inside of us. In fact, Living word. Yes, yeah, so for that reason, Jesus said, not Woo! only by bread a man lives, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. The, the third point, it is not enough only to read the Bible. We must ask Jesus to open our mind to understand the scriptures. So we can meditate constructive, constructively, otherwise it becomes confusion and the spirit of delusion. So we read in Luke Help chapter 24, more. verse 40, 45. And he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Yes. That is so clear and it's so, so important that we not depend on our own, own human understanding or reasoning when we read. Uh, or that we try to just pray without knowing the scriptures. Both are important that the Holy Spirit would give us the revelation of the scriptures. So many 
people you see that every verse or every Bible, every verse in the Bible, it's the some they have thousands of people they translate or they uh, preach it differently, interpret, yeah. interpret it differently. Why? If there is only one version which is the original, is the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. It says <laughs> Jesus opened our their minds so they can understand the scriptures. Means yes. that the Holy Spirit says the Spirit of Truth when it comes, the Helper. He says it will it will guide you to all the truth. So mm -hmm. what is the truth? The truth is the Word of God. Mm -hmm. He will guide you to understand the Word of God clearly. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there will be confusion and spirit of delusion. Eventually, yeah. Like yeah. One thing leads so to many, most of the cards where they were created in this world, taking from the scriptures. Out of context. Yeah, they yeah. took it. Like even the devil used the scriptures. Yeah. In the we, wilderness with yeah. Christ Jesus. Yeah, no, even wilderness yeah. and with Adam and Eve. He said, That's means true. God say that did God really say yeah. said that if you eat from the fruit of right. this tree you will the wrong interpretation yeah so he twists the word so That's means right. that that if you if Jesus doesn't understand it's not enough only to read the Bible you have to ask Jesus yes, he that he can he can open your mind so you can understand the scriptures Thank you, so Lord. when you come uh, uh, when you especially we are born again the first things you have to ask Lord open my mind Yes. So I understand the scriptures you, because you can have how many thousands of versions different interpreting yeah. the, the same verses, mm -hmm. but only the Holy Spirit will give you the right understanding. word and understanding yes. and right word and right version, That's right. which is the Holy. So Jesus said, "Open his mind." And this in the Second Thessalonians, chapter verse, uh, chapter two, verse ten and eleven. And with all the deceit of unrighteousness in those who perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Can I say something real quick right before you share? Is that, you know, when sometimes you learn or you hear or you read the Bible, you know, in whether it's in different versions or whether in, in this case for us, it's the different languages too. You can have so many different understandings, but if you're not seeking the way and the will and the voice of God when you're going through the Word of God, you, you can have a false narrative of the truth of God when, even if it's a different language, God is going to give you, if it's the Holy Spirit, the same message, understanding, and rhema, the revelation of what that means. And, and when that happens, you are safe in the truth of that revelation as opposed to in a confusion that can lead to delusion, which is what God himself put on the people there because they chose to not submit to the Spirit of God first. So it says very clearly, because they didn't, they received not the love of the truth, meaning that they didn't love the, the word, they didn't love the truth, which, what is the truth? It's the word of God, which is Jesus and the written words. So Hallelujah. this is the... The truth, they didn't love the truth, they didn't love Jesus and he, the words of Jesus, words of God. They didn't love neither God nor the word. So for that reason, God sent them the spirit of delusion, he says, to, to, to believe in the lie. So that if, like, it can be in different languages interpreted the Bible, in different uh, aspects, versions. versions, but all sound the, the same doctrine. If it's the Holy Spirit, that's right. The, Same it message. sounds the, the the right doctrine when it's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. In the we we speak different languages. We speak almost many. yeah many <laughs> almost together like <laughs> ten languages. So I I read the Bible in Arabic, in Armenian, in English, in in uh, French and Italian, and some some of them sometimes. In and and I read the Bible in English and French and Spanish and Portuguese and Italian. Yeah. As well. <laughs> So, and you know, every time God is showing you things in Scripture, um, all of these realms, the Holy Spirit will tell you the same truth. Yes. Because He's the Spirit of truth. Truth, yes. And so, He can't contradict something that's not of God. But that is why we have to depend on His Spirit when we're reading the Word and be in right standing with Him, both in the realm of doctrine and character and testimonies. Yes. So it's not enough only to read uh, the number four. It is not enough only to read the Bible. We must be inspired Woo! and led by the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. to meditate on God's kingdom and his righteousness. God doesn't want you to be uh, oppressed or influenced or as sorcerers who have used the Bible 
to create destructive spells. Mm -mm. So we read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You know, righteousness is freedom. The opposite is confusion, oppression, delusion, and just a big mess in this world. God wants us to be living in a place of peace and revelation. Peace meaning no war on the inside of you know, what is right, what is wrong, what is of God, what is not of God. He wants us to have a discernment and that peace. And on the other hand, he wants us to be protected from all of the uh, dangerous doctrines and realms that are in this world. Yes. So so we know that uh, uh, the, when the most of the prophets and apostles, they were all, when they wrote the, the scriptures or uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament, they were all inspired by the Holy Ghost. So if we we are children of God, but we receive the Holy Spirit, so when we want to uh, read the Bible only without being inspired, it becomes also a, a delusion. So we have to be inspired by the Holy Ghost, otherwise we go outside of kingdom of God and outside of his righteousness. Yes. Says, Seek first kingdom of God and his righteousness. Ooh. So when you read the Bible, when you are inspired by the Holy Spirit, like the prophet and the apostles, so you are doing the same thing. Means that when you are preaching the gospel, when you are inspired by the Holy Spirit, the, your word will be come by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and it won't hurt people. It will bring people right. to Jesus. It will say, like Paul, he Ooh. was speaking and said, God opened the heart of Lydia to, and so it means that his words, Thank because it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. You know, because we can't uh, letter by letter preach the gospel, but because we are, have the Holy Spirit in us, yes. and we are inspired by the Holy Spirit to give the right interpreter, interpre to interpret, uh, interpretation. interpretation of the Bible, which is only inspired by the Holy Ghost. And that's only when you are inspired by the Holy Ghost, it will says is profitable to of talking for to reprove, correct and instruct and to the righteousness. Amen. And you know what's really powerful is that the whole concept of it being through the Spirit of God is that it's going to produce life. It's going to bring healing. It's going to bring victory. You know, the opposite of all of this realm is a robot. Yes. It's somebody that, look, like either in the world, in the way of the world that is lawless or the way of religion that is, you know, robotic. It's just simply doing and saying, doing and saying, and doing and saying. And it's not a Holy Spirit led life that is consecrated and that is a testimony that people will see and hear the Lord, His presence in your life. And it's also when you're, when you're um, talking to people, when you're praying for people. And you're led by the Holy Spirit. You know the Word of God. You're led by the Holy Spirit. You're going to speak words of knowledge, whether it be prophetically or just encouragement or scripture, something in that moment that the Lord puts on your heart that is going to very literally change somebody's destiny in Jesus' name because you are led of His Spirit. So it's not enough only to read the Word, but we have to, we have to love the Word and meditate and be inspired by the Holy Spirit and the, and only Jesus can open our understanding to, to understand the, the scriptures and uh, and we can uh, do it, uh, we can meditate constructively and otherwise it becomes confusion and spirit yeah. of delusion. So, and I think of like, you know, History Channel and different sources that have used the Bible to justify things that are not godly. Um, out of context, and I just use that in this, as an example of what we're referring to when people will use scripture. They've studied theology and all the Bible and all these things without the Spirit of God. So that's why, you know, we want to be filled with God's Spirit to represent God's life. And the last point is that um, the Bible is life. His word brings life. Okay, Amen. let us pray. Thank you, Lord Hallelujah. Jesus. We pray that uh, this is that your words are you, alive and you, it's a living word because it always comes from the, the Holy Spirit and we are inspired and we meditate on your laws 
day and night. We pray that you can uh, give us to love the word and to meditate the word and be uh, always be inspired by the Holy Spirit and so that we can we can have the right doctrine in our mind and our heart because you wrote you wrote these words and the Bible and the Word of God is written in our heart and our mind Thank when God. we are uh, uh, led by the Holy Spirit Thank to read Jesus. the Bible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we declare the power of God's presence, His Word, Amen. His glory, His anointing over your life. You know, uh, uh, such an incredible timing that we're living in. There is no coincidence to what... Uh, there's no coincidence to what God is wanting to do in these days and having you be a part of it for such a time. So we just say, say, Lord God, even so come, let us be ready. Let us be ready and let us be completely prepared for what he wants to do.
the angels cry. Oh, holy, O creation cry. Oh, holy, you are lifted high. Oh, holy, holy forever. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will always be holy, and He loves you. He wants to redeem everything in your life. We declare that blessing over you. We love you, and we're we're here anytime for prayer. We love you. God bless you. Until next time.